to the teaching section of this particular service. And first of all, we'd like to welcome on board TCN Toronto that is having their service, first service this morning. I know I should have been with you this morning, but these were circumstances that were beyond my own personal control. That's why I couldn't make it to Toronto, but I guarantee that in the month of May, all right, I will be there after platform, all right? So it's important, all right, that you build the community there and make it focused on the people that are dwelling within that particular region. Welcome on board Toronto. We look forward to great things happening in your midst and the beginning of the work of the Covenant Nation, establishing God's kingdom in the nation of Canada. God bless you all. All right, we'll take our confession this morning before the message. As I said to listen to the word of God today, a door of utterance has been opened unto me, and I hear the voice of God clearly speaking to me, this is the way to go, walk ye in it. I listen under the influence of the Spirit of God. I am not distracted by anything or anyone. The Word of God is food to my spirit. I am strengthened by it this morning. It is wine to my heart, creating joy within me. It is oil to my face, causing my life to shine, giving me victory in everything that I do. As my eyes make contact with the scriptures used in this message, the Spirit of God opens new things to me. He also brings to my remembrance things that Jesus once showed me. I come to understand God's system on the earth, and I receive instruction, encouragement, correction, and the enablement to live out God's will. Amen. All right, this morning and for probably the next six weeks, I'm going to be teaching on the subject of faith. That's the central place of my calling in ministry, which is to teach the word of faith all right, to people. I will be looking at it in different facets from different perspectives so that we get a complete picture on this subject of faith. The Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And it tells us that by it, the elders obtained a good report. Now, what do we mean by a good report? Or what will the scriptures mean by a good report, rather? It speaks to the fact that if a child comes back from school and he has a good report, right, card there, then you know the child has done well in school. So by it, the report card for the elders was, the Bible says, they obtained a good report. So if you are going to obtain a good report when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and your life, as a script here, is marked, the things that you did by faith will cause you to have right score very, very high. Now we start with Hebrews 11 chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. I'll stop with that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And this morning I will just teach on this line that faith is the substance of of the things that you hope for. Another translation says, faith is giving substance or substantiating the things that you hope for. So if I have a dream or I hope to own a house, I will have to give substance to that particular hope or dream that I have within my heart. How do I give substance to it? I begin to take steps 
towards the realization of this dream. So first of all, I purchase a land. I am given substance to it. I have that picture on the inside of me. I get an architect to describe the vision that I have, draws out a plan. Then you hire an engineer and then you begin the process of getting raw materials, deploying it to the site, and you are given substance to that particular dream. So faith is always an act. Let me repeat that. Faith is always an act. A person who is in faith is doing a certain things that will bring about the realization of the dream. That person is given substance to the things that they hope for. Now let's take this one step and make it clear. Let's just look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 3. It says, a dream cometh through the multitude of business. And a fool's voice is known only by the multitude of words. A dream cometh through the multitude of business. In other words, if a dream is going to come to pass... There might be several steps or activities that you will have to carry out in order for that dream to come to pass. But it says that a fool's voice, all right, a fool is known by, all right, the multitude of words. In other words, the fool's voice is known. All they're doing is talking and talking and talking about it. They never give substance. They never take a step towards the fulfillment of it. The Bible says that a slothful man will lie on his bed and as it were torn about on the bed as a door all right, with hinges there. And he says when you ask him, he make, gives excuses and says there's a lion out there in the street. In other words, he's a slothful man. He's not taking any steps. He's making an all kinds of excuses. He's giving or making all kinds of excuses, reasons why he cannot do it. And he observes the window, so he never makes his move. He regards the clouds. He looks at the environment. But a person of faith, as a person that will step out, when the environment is not conducive, when the resources are not yet available, but they step out in faith for the fulfillment of that dream, acting on something. And it's that something I want to teach this morning. But the slothful man, that's why the Bible says we shouldn't be slothful, but we should be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Right? Now James put it this way. He said, faith without works is dead, being alone. He said, then he went on in verse 18. James 2, all right, 18. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith. That is not possible to show faith without works, without action. I will show you my faith through the steps or the things that I am doing. Let me repeat, faith is beyond a confession and it is obedience, all right, to the instructions that God gives you on how that particular dream. In other words, it's a dream and God is the one who is going to give you the instructions and as you obey those instructions, then you are given substance to the things that you hope for. So what a person says is impossible, all things are really possible. But they are instructions 
that must be received and obeyed for anything, all right, or that which is beyond the reach of a person for it to materialize on the earth. The set of instructions that must be received and obeyed and any and everything can come to pass. And those instructions the father wants to give. The body of those instructions is what we will call the substance of the things that you are hoping for. You don't need to have the resources or for the environment to be conducive. Never. But you need to have or receive instructions from God and carry out those instructions and you will, by that, give substance, all right, to the things that you are hoping for. So first of all, let's say this here as we go more into this teaching to talk about it. Nothing is impossible. Look, when man got up and said that, I want to show you here, some men said, look, we want to fly all right, and want, to, and want a plane, build a plane, well, we want to call it a plane then, but want to build a machine that will fly. And all they were talking about was for it to go, maybe just fly for 100 meters. Now, people said it's impossible, it cannot be done. These people believed against all odds that it can be done. And after some time of searching, they received the substance to that particular dream and once they put that substance to work which was the things that they needed to do it became a reality now today because that substance on how to fly is inside of the earth the substance is in the earth today if somebody gets up and says it is impossible to fly across the ocean, people are going to laugh at you. Why? Because what people 200 years ago will say, are you out of your mind? Today they'll say, if you, if you say, all right, uh, the opposite of it and said, it's impossible. People say, my friend, you are an illiterate. Now, why are they saying that? Because man has received, all right, from God, the divine intelligent, the very substance of that dream, and that substance is on the earth today. It can be studied, it can be understood and applied repeatedly. So everything that seems out of reach, you first of all must receive the substance of it into you, and that's the know-how, and then you begin to apply that to that situation and there will be a materialization of it. That's why Mary said, when they said you are going to conceive and have a child, as a virgin, she said, the way in which we know for women to conceive is they come together with a man. Now, how am I going to have a child without a man? In other words, you will have to Give me the instructions as to how this can happen without it being with a man. And Mary said to the angel, how shall these things be? Saying, I know no man. And the angel said to her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and began to show her how this thing is going to happen. That. And he says, the power of God and you will conceive. Same thing Jesus did in the book of Luke and John. He asked them and said, listen, how are we going to feed the multitudes out of reach? And then they looked around and people, the Bible says he himself knew exactly what he was going to do. In other words, he had the substance within himself, so he was at a position of rest. Now, these other folks, and he said it to prove them, for he himself, now put up verse 5 there. It tells us, when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said to Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? And then they said to him, all right, this is said to them to prove them, for he knew what to do. And then the next verse, it tells us, Philip answered and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient, all right, that we don't have the material substance. Jesus knew what to do. 
So faith, all right, takes us into another realm where we receive instructions that cause, all right, supernatural power to be released. That's why when you study faith, it has always been obedient to instructions that God gave. So when it came to Abel, he obeyed an instruction. He offered up a more excellent sacrifice. When it came also to Abraham, the Bible says it was an instruction. He left his father's house, an instruction, to a land that I will show thee. When it came to Noah, it was an instruction. He was warned by God of something that was to come. And God said, go and build an ark. So in this issue of faith, it's not just emergency, which means the flood is coming, and then we are praying and believing. Let's say, in this place, God wants you ahead of time about certain things and gives you the instruction, just like Joseph. He laid out the instructions for him. So faith is not just something that you live carelessly, all right, without any vision. Then at the end of the day, when there's an emergency, then you start putting pressure, all right, on God and start praying and fasting. It is a, it's a lifestyle. He showed him things to come. God can show you things that will happen in the next 30 years, 20 years, and then give you instructions now that in 15 years' time, Things will begin to evolve within your life. The people will be wondering what's going on. Where because the divine, the mind of God touched upon your own mind. This is what I want to look at. There are instructions he can give to you concerning divine health. And give you the lifestyle and tell you as a person, because he created you and he understands your body better than any other person, and then begins to give you instructions on how, all right, to conduct yourself for this body to be long and spend long here upon the earth. So faith is the substance. The giving of substance to the things that you hope for. There are works that you carry out which are, all right, steps that you take in obedience to the instructions that God gives you on to how or as to how that particular thing will be fulfilled. So a person of faith is a person who obeys the instructions of God and steps out in faith, working with those instructions to cause certain things to happen. So this morning, I want to get into how will you open up your mind to the mind of God so that you can start downloading the supernatural information that you need to cause supernatural things to happen in your life. But there are three things. Faith is the substance of things that you hope for. Now, first of all, so we've got to understand this, it is giving substance to your hope. Now, hope is spiritual. First, um, first Corinthians 13 and 13 says this. It says, there abideth this three, faith, it says, hope, and the charity or law. This three, but the greatest of them is charity, which is love. So hope is a spiritual thing. Hope is not just your personal desire. Hope is not just, you know, you say vision, all right, that I have for my future. Now, hope originates in a desire. And hope originates in a vision that you have. Let me repeat this. Hope is not a, just a desire that you have for certain things. Hope is not just a vision personally that you have. But hope always originates in a vision or a desire, something inside you that is moving that you may not perfectly understand. So hope is the sanctification. The word sanctification means the separation unto God. 
of your desire or personal vision where it is now converted into what we will call hope. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11 to 19. Now we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope, it says there, it's unto the end, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now I want you to see how he uses the word promises and interchange it with the word hope in certain places. Now look at the next thing. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. That in blessing shall I bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee. And after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Now look at what they have. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is them to the end of all strife. Wherein, wherein God willing more abundantly to show to the heirs of the promise. He's still using the word promise. The immutability of his counsel confounded by, hope, by an oath. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled from re for refuge to lay hold upon the hope or the promise. So the hope is a promise. The hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor to the soul. That's the promise. Both sure and steadfast which entereth into that within the veil, whether the forerunner Jesus has gone in being made a high priest. So what he's saying here is the hope that you have now in God which becomes the anchor to your soul that takes you within the veil actually is given to you by a promise that God makes to you. Right? Hope is beyond just your personal desire. It is when you take a desire to God in prayer and as it were, he sanctifies that desire and sets it apart for himself by making a promise unto you. And the promise will always be, it will always supersede your vision or desire in an abundant measure. He expands it and then gives you what is called hope. So it always is a promise that God has ma makes to a person. That's why it says about the promise, and then it talks about, all right, the hope. We say this in Romans chapter 4, verse 17, and I'll show you how to do that. But I want to establish it. Romans 4, verse 17, because many people don't do this. We're going to the ABCs of faith now. As it is written, I have made thee, as it is written, a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. Next verse. Who against hope believed in hope. Verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God. Verse 21. It says this. Being fully persuaded that what God had promised, so the basis of his hope, was a promise that God made to him. So you have to get a verbal, or we'll say a written commitment from God concerning that desire and vision that you have in your heart. But the fact that that vision and desire is in you was put there by God. But he wants you to bring it up unto him so there is a clarification of what he intends to do through you and it will always supersede and exceed in abundant measure what you are thinking or what you are imagining. But do this work here, first thing. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45 tells us, Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her by the Lord. So the Lord himself tells you certain things. 
So where does this hope come from? Psalm 119, verse 49 and verse 50. It says, Remember thy word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This has been my comfort in all my affliction, for thy word hath done what quickened me. So when the word quickens you, the word gives you hope. We have taught that, you know, once you hear from heaven, you have faith. No, it's hope that you are given first. It says, thy word hath quickened me. Remember thy word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me now to hope. Now, this hope is an anchor to your soul. And it takes you within the veil. But it says, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. It says, for thy word has quickened me. Now, put Romans 4, 17. Look at the word quicken. Look at the word hope. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickens the dead. That's the word that quickens. Who colored those things that be not as though they are? That's the quickening there. Next verse, who, who against hope believed in hope? So it was given an expectation. God came and communicated. Abraham wanted a child, but God came now and took that and said, I'm going to expand this and give you hope. And that hope is not just a child, it is that you are going to be a father of many nations. God never said to Abraham, you are going to have a child. He said, I am going to make you a father of many nations. His desire was the child. The hope was a father of many nations. Do you see, he took that desire and converted it into something that was much bigger and his desire was only a minute fraction of the hope that God gave. But you must have that hope from him because God, except God gives you a written on taken there, then you cannot operate in faith to receive the instructions for the fulfillment of that particular thing. And faith is your obedience, all right, to those instructions. So let's look at this again. What then do you do with the hope in Hebrews chapter 6? What do you do? It is an anchor to your soul that is both sure and steadfast. So how do you get this hope? You get this hope from the written word of God. Where you get the hope is from the written word of God. It tells us in a scripture in Romans, I think it's Romans 11 for Romans, it says that the scriptures have been given to us, we receive comfort from the scriptures that we might, all right, obtain um, hope there. I believe it's Romans, all right, 15, 4. Whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. So we get it from the scriptures. And quickly, how do you get it? You spend time praying in the spirit over your desire or vision, or over the present circumstance in your life. Because it can be born from a desire, a vision, or it could be born from pressure that just comes on you. And as you begin to pray in the spirit and commit the situation to God and spend time praying in the spirit and praying in the spirit, then immediately after praying in the spirit, we've taught this, read the word of God. Immediately after praying in the spirit. All right, reading the Bible for 30 minutes after you pray in the Spirit will fetch you much more than you praying in the Spirit, allowing the influence of the Holy Ghost to wane off from you totally. And then you, you get tired and pick up the Bible that you're reading from. Listen, that's when the influence of the Spirit is highest upon you. All right, read it at that particular point in time. And it won't take you max seven days you practice this, where scriptures will begin to be quickened into your heart and the hope starts coming out of the scriptures and God shows you what he intends to do in that particular situation. Now with this hope on the inside, 
You don't just start acting and going into what we call guesswork. Remember, faith is obedient to the set of instructions that God gives to you for the fulfillment of that hope. And those set of instructions are deeply spiritual instructions. So you can arrive at it with the brilliance of the human mind. Or else, how will you know that, go and dip yourself seven times into that pool that Elisha told, all right, Neman there, go and dip yourself seven times into the pool. And after that, you come out, you'll be completely healed of leprosy. How do you, how do you arrive at the instructions there, all right, just by your own mental? How do you do that? So God wants to open up his mind to you and show you the instruction that he gave to Abraham for the fulfillment of the hope that he gave to him, which was a father of many nations have I made thee, the instruction was take your only child Isaac and take him to this mountain and you go and sacrifice him there. The day he carried out that instruction, it wasn't just he was confessing, he carried out an instruction. God said, for this thing that you have done in blessing shall I bless thee, and in multiplying shall I multiply thee. So there is coming to know what to do. So many people might even see things in scripture. And then just get up and begin to try several ideas. And the Bible says, the labor of the foolish man wearieth all of them because he knoweth not how to enter into the city. So how do you go in? Hebrews chapter 6 verse 17 tells us how we get to this. Wherein God willingly more abundantly showed to the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong refuge who have fled for refuge strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us now how do we lay hold upon it in next verse it says which hope we have as an anchor to the soul both sure and steadfast and entereth into that within the veil so you go and lay hold upon that hope and you receive the substance of that hope within the veil which is in the holiest of all the very presence of god that's where you should go first for it says in returning and in rest and you enter into the place and rest in god's presence there worshiping him and giving him glory thanking him for the fulfillment of that promise that is within the veil now, what do we mean within the veil? There's another dimension to this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. It, sorry, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Sorry. Alright, verse 16. Alright, now he says, thank you, verse 15. For even until this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Verse 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil, all right, shall be taken away. So it tells us the veil is upon their heart. Now, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, it tells us, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the mind of them. Of God.
and serving one another. Knowing that selfishness or self-centeredness, that ego, is the greatest destroyer of destiny. I believe you are blessed by this. We're going to go into a real series here where you understand practical. There will be depth, but it will be simple. It will be practical. And we're talking about faith, what it is, how it works in our lives. So that we can obtain a good report and cause the supernatural to be, to manifest, having breakthroughs all around. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for this message. Thank you for your people. I ask for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus upon every single one of us. The eyes of our understanding being opened up. I pray in the name of Jesus that any person who is right here with their desire or their hope who have been struggling, doing several things, let your Holy Spirit rest over them as a canopy this moment. And within the next seven days, minister to them from the scriptures. And as they take the scriptures into your presence with songs of worship and praise, giving glory unto you, bring them to a place of full persuasion by the information you will drop into their heart and the light that you're going to give unto them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen god bless you toronto a welcome once again all right every single thing is orchestrated by god he has a reason for every single thing okay let me just say this um for those who are now we're speaking to a global audience now because manchester starts their own service next sunday that's the first of may and then we'll pick up with the London Center um, towards the end of May. And then we are opening up about six centers also in May in the city of Lagos. Next week, I will talk about it. We'll form the core teams for those ones in Lagos. All right, so quick announcement here. First of all, the platform is on the 2nd of May. All right, for those watching internationally online, you can uh, get on it. Um, on channels i think channels also comes up on sky or you can watch it via the internet in nigeria you can watch it all right from channels television dstv 420 or terrestrial in different cities all right but you will also be on our facebook page it will also be on our um covenant nation all right on youtube on facebook uh you can see it on the platform also uh, YouTube and Facebook, you can watch it live there. Now, our registration has run to several thousands, but we have looked at the data and we have found out that only 32% of people that have registered are covenant members. All right? Now, you can write this down. This is going to be the most informative insights. your own church members all right so do register it's the platform nigeria.org forward slash register very simple register all right it's a fiscal event that will beam out live we're right here all speakers will have 25 to 30 minutes and then we'll have a panel we'll take questions from the audience about entrepreneurship building a business and the climate in which we are today all right Second thing is the class two leaders who did register after the workers' meeting. About 700, I think 32 in number, 732. The first training session will be on Wednesday at 8 p.m. The Zoom links will be sent to your emails, please. We have sent out emails. Check your emails or check spam. All right, spam mails there to find out whether those mails are there. All right, 8 p.m., the Zoom link. If you don't get it, then send in to info. Uh, use the um, um, office uh, feedback link, all right, that comes up in the announcement to send information that you don't have it. And they'll check you registered and we'll send it to you. It's going to be very important. 
all right a large aspect of the future of this ministry rests upon all right the skill set that class two leaders will have so this is very important 8 p.m we start the virtual and then we'll have two more which will be physical and then we'll jump start all right that particular system thank you so much for registering uh it's 700 and something is a very good number god bless you all and uh, stay in prayers all right um for platform this week as god to grant utterance that his word will go forth unhindered that people will receive wisdom the future of nations is in entrepreneurship all right nations grow and nations were built first through business go and read history there okay even this nation of nigeria was a business entity that bought it a british company then sold it to a government all of the reaching out uh, ships going out it was business ventures not political ventures at first all right then god bless you all have a wonderful week in his presence in jesus name amen